Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Catherine, and in this video, we're gonna be talking about API keys. If you don't know what an API is, essentially you use APIs in order to get access to specific data or functionality. You can check out my video linked down below if you want more information on that, but this video is gonna be about API keys. Let's get started. Generally speaking, it's a value that simply identifies your application and your requests. If an API requires a key, you must first be accepted as a user of the service and retrieve your personal identifier, your API key. Once an API key with a unique value has been assigned to you, a user of the API service, you'll be able to use the API in your code. When you call the API in your program, the API key will be part of the request you make to the service. With the API key as part of the request, the service can identify you, log which services you are using and how often, accept your request if the API key is valid, and ultimately send you the appropriate data in response. Therefore, an API key is for identification and authorization. It's for identifying your application's request with your API key and checking whether that API key has been granted access to send you the appropriate data. Now, the API service is responsible for maintaining all of the keys and checking them as each request comes in. If the API key is invalid and not mapped to a user, the API will send back an error response. If the API key is mapped to a user that has made too many requests within a small amount of time, the API will also send back an error, as it looks like the user is attempting to overload the system with a cyber attack. There are also public and private API keys, but that's for another video and dives deeper into cryptography, cybersecurity, and OAuth. If you're interested in learning about this, leave a comment down below and I'll make more videos about it. For now, let's get our own API key and make a request to an API. Let's jump back over to the code. In this video, we are going to be using the MTA Bus Time API. The MTA buses are the public bus service provided in New York City. Before we can get started, be sure to get an API key from the MTA bus time here. You'll need to request it and it might take a while to come back, but it's essential for this tutorial. Once you have your API key, we can start making requests. I'm going to be blocking out my API key because an API key is not something you should share. Others can take your API key and try to attack the service, and since it's linked to you and your application, you don't want that to happen under your name. Therefore, if you're ever uploading to GitHub or posting a snippet of code somewhere, be sure to take out the API key or save it in an environment variable. Now that we have our key, we can make our first API request. We are going to be using the discovery API, which is over here to start out, and we're going to use it to find the nearest bus stop for a given location. So we are going to scroll down here to the last one, and there's a lot of functionality in this API. And as you saw up here, there's a lot of APIs available. Of course, we can't cover it all in this tutorial, but this will help you get the sense of API keys in general and how to use them in your code and just how they work. Scrolling down, we are going to be using the for information on stops near a location, use blank. We're going to click on that. And permission denied. This is because we haven't put in our API key yet. Here it says, you know, your key here. You have to put in your API key in order for this to work and in order for the service to accept your request and give you the appropriate data back. So I'm gonna grab my API key and then I'm gonna paste it in right here and we'll hit enter and we get some data back. The data we get back depends on exactly what request we put in. So because we put our request in for this latitude and then this longitude, that's how we got this data back. And this data is, you know, what are the bus stops around a given location? What are the bus stops around this latitude and longitude? So looking at the data a little bit more, if yours isn't formatted like this, you probably have something like this. There's a Google Chrome extension you can get. I'll put it in the comments below. Um, but yeah, so this is your data going through it. Um, it's a series of stops, an array of stops near the location we gave it. Going into the stops, for each stop we have a code, a direction, an ID, you know, a bunch of stuff, the name of the stop. And so in this case we have 
Fifth Avenue and West 36th Street. And then we have all the routes or all the buses that stop at Fifth Ave, West 36th Street. And so in this case, we have, you know, George Washington Bridge and then the description of it. And then you have the URL for the actual schedule. And so if you're making some kind of iOS app or a website, you could use this information to fill out your website. Or if you wanted to do a chatbot, this API could be great for you. So scrolling down in here, you'd have all the schedules. And that's just one bus at one stop. Scrolling down, we can see all the different buses that stop here. So we have Staten Island, Manhattan Express. We keep going, you know, all these different buses stop at this bus stop, which is Fifth Avenue, West 36th Street. And so we can go ahead and close these. And then we have another stop that is near the location we gave, which is, you know, Fifth Avenue, West 33rd Street. Seems right. West 33rd Street. And then we have all the different buses that stop at this bus stop. And then we can keep going. In this case, we have 23 stops that are near the location we gave it. Now let's try a different location. This one is going to be near Union Square. And so it's going to be 40.7359. And then the longitude is going to be 73, negative 73, 99, 11. We'll hit enter. And here we get bus stops around Union Square. And so Union Square is like, you know, 4th, 5th Avenue and like 13th to 17th Street. So here we go. We have 4th Avenue, East 13th Street. We keep scrolling down. Another stop that we have near us is, you know, 5th Avenue, West 17th Street. And you can keep looking at all these as well as what buses stop at these individual bus stops. Now, let's say I wanted to get on this Harlem East Village bus at this stop, 4th Avenue, East 13th Street. We can use the ID of this bus stop, so this ID right here, to find out when the next bus is coming, when the next any of these buses are coming. To do this, we can use a different API that is given by MTA, and I'm going to paste this over here. So that way we have it, and then we're going to go back to the MTA bus page, and we're going to be using the stop monitoring, and this is how we can figure out when the next bus is coming at a given stop. So we're going to scroll down, and here, here it has information about each of the parameters. We already know how to use this, and so we are just going to click on this. And we're going to get some errors here because the API key is not authorized, it's not recognized, you know, we haven't put it in yet. So put in your API key, that'll be the first step. And then the next step is going to be to put in the monitoring reference ID. So if we go back here, this is the ID, the code is MTA, but we're going to want the number here. So we're going to copy that, we're going to paste it over here. And then the line reference we're going to want, we're going to want to go back uh, to our stops for location page and we're going to want to grab the ID here. So it's MTA NYCT M1. We can grab this last bit here. And here we have line reference MTA percent 20. We'll go ahead and paste in the line and then you'll go ahead and paste in your API key. And here we go, now we have our data here. And how do we know it's the right one? Well, the line reference matches, which was NYCT M1. And then we have the stop point reference, that matches. And here we say, oh, it's at the stop, we better. And we get all of this metadata as well about that given bus. And then for the next bus, let's say I missed that one because you know we're here coding. We can go ahead and see. Scrolling down, to three stops away. So the next one, if I miss that one, we're three stops away. What about the next one? It's about a mile away. So there you go. Now you know how to use an API key to make an API request. But why do you have to use one? API providers want to identify requests made to their service. 
This way they can track API keys for quota, which is like how many times your service uses the application in billing. Furthermore, if someone is requesting too many times, the service can simply block requests with that API key. API keys do not identify the user making the API request. They are only a unique value associated with your application. This means the API service cannot restrict access to specific users. It can only restrict specific requests with a specific API key itself. APIs and API keys can definitely be confusing, so I hope this video helped you understand them a little bit better. Thanks for watching and subscribe if you don't want to miss more technical tutorials. I have some freebies down below in the description box and happy coding!